We're looking at the resurrection scene from the gospel according to Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. This will be the assigned gospel text for the Easter day celebration in the three-year lectionary. In our reading, we have the scene, obviously, of Jesus being resurrected on the first day of the week, which is a Sunday, and how subsequently the disciples came into contact with the initial announcement that Jesus had been raised from the dead. In our reading, we have angels standing there announcing to the women who had come to the tomb. They had found the tomb open, right? The stone rolled away. And then the women return with the news about the resurrection of the Christ. They remember Jesus' words. They return from the tomb. They tell the 11 apostles all of the things. The women are the first recipients of the resurrection news, and they tell it to the apostles, and the apostles do not believe. And then Peter goes on and checks out the story. Now, this is significant because, number one, it's the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus promotes the reality that Jesus is the Son of God. He is the one with all authority in heaven and on earth, to borrow from the Gospel of Matthew, or to couch it in terms of the Gospel of Luke, as he proclaimed earlier in the Gospel of Luke when he was in the synagogue in Nazareth, his hometown, that the prophecy of Isaiah has come fulfilled in him, that the Lord, the God Almighty, is proclaiming a year of his favor, the setting free of the captives. Jesus is the one who has come to Israel to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah, and the entire of his work has been captured through his mission and ministry while on earth in Galilee and in the surrounding regions of Judea. For the people of Israel, he is the Messiah, which means he forgives sins, he raises the dead, he drives out demons, he heals people of their leprosy or of their fevers if you're Peter's mother-in-law. He is doing the work of setting captives free from sin, death, and the power of the devil. His identity and his authority are confirmed in all that he does and says. But this is, of course, the primary contestation of all the people who interact with Jesus at one point or another. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the chief priests, and the leaders of the people, indeed, they're the ones that actually put Jesus to death because of his claims of authority and his, uh, and his performance of the saving acts of God in, the, in and among the people of Israel. When Jesus is resurrected, when Jesus is resurrected, his identity and his authority start to sort of show up. It's almost like an epiphany that rolls over the disciples in the days leading up to the resurrection. They start to remember everything Jesus said, and they start to go, oh, right, didn't he say that this was what, what was going to happen? I guess he wasn't lying. The resurrection reminds us number of a number of things about Jesus' identity and his authority, about the fact that his sayings, his words, his promises are trustworthy and sure, about how we can trust what he says and we don't have to look to other means for which we might guide ourselves or find salvation. We are, in fact, completely justified to believe Jesus Christ and him alone. We have that justification based on the fact that he is raised from the dead, which is extremely good news and something during the season of Easter we should believe more firmly and take to the bank. We are justified in believing and trusting in Jesus Christ alone. Did we do good? Is that is that okay? If, if you liked that, hit the button that says that you like that. Maybe even subscribe to see more of these. Even give. Help us fund this mission of making known the gifts of Christ Jesus to youth and young adults. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.